Okay, today data communications and network one class is on lecture 14, chapter 7, multiplexing. Okay, what is multiplexing? Multiplexing is a method that allows many users to share the same transmission medium. Okay, and why is it useful or necessary? Because if you have high capacity transmission links, okay, uh, such, as, such as optical fiber, which has a lot of bandwidth, um, coaxial cable, or the microwave link, okay, so this transmission link or this transmission media allow you to send a lot of data at the same time with a very high data rate. But a user usually use, um, usually sometimes, usually send um, lower data rate, okay, than the transmission medium can, um, can transmit. So if you allow other users to send together in the same uh, transmission medium, you can share the cost of the, of the send of the transmission, okay, and it will be cheaper. So if you have, suppose you use um, copper, copper wire or the trans twisted pair, okay, and you send um, by yourself, okay, then if you want to change to coaxial cable, and suppose you can, uh, you have, um, what, let's say, 100 friends, okay, that want to send together, so instead of sending only one, uh, using one uh, trans one copper wire, okay, for each other, for, for one user. You have coaxial cable for 100 users. So then you can share the cost of the coaxial cable and um, it, will be, it will be cheaper for everyone, okay. So if you have transmission uh, medium which is a very high data rate, okay, the higher the data rate that the transmission medium can transmit, the lower the cost per kilobit per sec, okay. Therefore, um, the optical fiber is usually the cheapest because um, cheapest per kilobit per sec, okay? Because uh, it has uh, almost unlimited bandwidth. It can transmit a lot of users at the same time. So this is, be is this better to share to save the cost of communications, um, of the transmission of the communica communication system. So what we do is that we have uh, end users coming into the multiplexer, and this um, the data from end users, okay, are combined into only one transmission link. Okay, so there's there's one link, but uh, there are n channels, um, and we will see how we separate uh, how we, how we define the channel. Okay, in a little bit. Um, anyway, so we have only one line. For example, optical fiber. So optical fiber um, sent to the destination, and at the destination, there is a demultiplexer. The demultiplexer will separate the users into n outputs, okay? Therefore, um, it seems like each of the user is transmitted to the destination. However, the actual physical link is only one link. So if you want to see this, okay? If no multiplexing, no, no multiplexing, what you do is that you have end users, right? You have to have end lines. Okay, this is no multiplexing. But if you have multiplexing, you have um, end user, and you send only one line here. Okay, so, even though this one, for example, this is optical fiber, and this is a um, twisted pair. Even though the optical fiber is more expensive than, so one, one optical fiber link is more expensive than one uh, twisted pair link, but if you use, um, optical fiber to combine many, many users together and send together, then this one will be cheaper than the N twisted pair. Okay, cheaper than N twisted pair. If N is large, okay, therefore, um, 
using optical fiber is cheaper in terms of so per one kilobit per sec okay using optical fiber is cheaper than sending twisted pair in this case but if you have only one user okay then you should not use if you have only one user and you can send it to a set pair, then you, you should not use optical fiber because uh, optical fiber will be uh, too expensive if you want to send a very low data rate. Okay? So that is the uh, difference between uh, using multiplexer and no multiplexer. Now let's look at the multiplexing techniques. The first one is FDM or frequency division multiplexing. The second one is TDM or time division multiplexing. Uh, the time division multiplexing, sometimes we call it synchronous TDM or synchronous time division multiplexing. Okay. Now, what is frequency division multiplexing? In this case, many signals can be carried simultaneously. So they can be carried at the same time by modulating each of them with a different carrier frequency. So they are at different, um, centered at different frequencies. Okay. So you can combine them without overlapping and then they can be transmitted in the same link and the carrier frequency have to be separated enough okay it have to be far enough so that the bandwidth of the modulated signals do not overlap so let's see this example if you have three uh, different signals s1t s2t and s3t and we use uh, so we have to use three different carrier frequencies okay f sub 1 f sub 2 and f sub 3 to find um, to combine them, okay, to get the multiplex signal. So, the first one, okay, so let, let all of them have bandwidth B, okay, have been bandwidth B, and this is the spectrum. So, the first one is multiplied by cosine 2 pi F1t. So, it's like you modulate them to center as F1, so you get the, the, um, the modulated signal will center as F1, okay, and it will have, uh, you know, the same shape, okay, as the, the, bad, the baseband signal, okay, so the, the negative frequency will just, um, will just be on the, on the lower sideband of the F1. So this is uh, on the right, okay, the modulated signal. Then the second, uh, the second signal is sub 2t, okay, have a spectrum like that as a square um, or a um, rectangle. A uh, constant, you know, amplitude. So it's multiplied by cosine two pi f two t. Okay, and it's moved to another frequency. You can see that. You can see that it's centered at f two. Okay, and the uh, and the uh, um, and the bandwidth. Okay, uh, in this different range as the bandwidth of the first frequency, the first modulated frequency. Okay. Um, then the last one, okay, it's modulated by cosine 2 pi F33, and it's moved to center at F3, okay? Again, um, okay, this, this number two here is um, this missing, okay? We want to, I want to show you that this, the bandwidth is 2B, okay? If the bad baseband bandwidth is, um, is B, then the modulated bandwidth is 2B, okay? The B is missing here. Anyway, you see that the modulated frequency, they are at different range. So when you add them all together, you will get spectrum like this, okay? So this is channel one, channel two, channel three. They are not overlap. They are not overlapping, so you can transmit them uh, at the same time, okay? And then you can separate them later by filters. Um, if you look at it in the time domain, the signal, the FDM signal, okay, equal to S sub 1T, Cosine multiplied by cosine 2 pi F1t plus S sub 2t multiplied by cosine 2 pi F2t and plus S sub 3 multiplied by cosine 2 pi F3t. So this is a time domain, um, time domain function, okay? And but the frequency spectrum will look like that. Now, if you use um, so this one, you use double sideband in this picture, okay? So you have the the F1, F2, F3 at at the center. And you can see that the left hand side and the right hand side, the lower side band and the upper side band, they are the same. Okay, they are the same. Uh, they look the same. They are the middle of each other. Okay, 
them the middle of each other. So if you need, if you have only one side, you can get the next uh, the the other side. Okay. So let's look at this. If you have Okay, this is a carrier, right? And this is a, this is called upper sideband. This is called lower sideband of this spectrum. Okay, again, this is again upper sideband, lower sideband. This is upper sideband and lower sideband. And you can see that. The upper sideband and the lower sideband, okay, they are symmetry, right? They are the middle of each other. So if you know this one, only this one, okay, you can find the other side. Again, if you know this one, you can find the other side. If you know this one, sorry, this one is uh, like this, okay? Uh, if you know this one, you can find the other side. So you don't actually have to send um, both sides, okay? You can send only something like this. You can send this, and then this, and then this, okay? So you send single sideband transmission. Okay, or SSB, okay? So you send, so in this case, since, um, since you use less bandwidth, okay, you can put them close together closer together, right? You can put them closer together. You don't have to use F1, F2, F3 like that. You can F use F4, F5, F6, okay? That are closer together than S1, S2, and S3. Okay? So this one you save the bandwidth, right? Because this case you use less bandwidth than this case, okay? If you use single side band. However, this is more complicated to do, okay? It's more complicated to, uh, to construct and more complicated to uh, demodulate. Okay. Now, if you look at this, okay, you can see that. You can see that uh, there is a multiplexer, okay? Combining three um, three users signals together, so this is just look at the look at the positive signal, okay, of the baseband, and it's modulated, and we look at only the upper side band, okay. So it's on the right hand side of of F one, F two, and F three. Again, they are at different range of the frequency. So when you add them together, you get something like this, okay. So this is the sending and the receiving bandwidth. You can see that on the left-hand side, is there are three users sending in the same line, okay? The, the link in between, okay, is only one link. So you can send for a long distance, okay? Only one link. You don't have to send three, three, um, three um, links, okay? You can combine them and send only one link. And then at the receiving end, when you receive that, you will demultiplex, okay? What the MIDI multiplexer do is that it will filter to get, it will filter at the appropriate frequency, okay, to get the, um, the spectrum of different signals, okay, coming out. So you have the spectrum of the first and the second and the third frequency. And we can filter like this because the spectrums do not overlap, okay. Then you demodulate. Demodulate means that you uh, you shift okay the frequency to from the high frequency to the low frequency. So the rightmost uh, rightmost spectrum here is uh, at zero. Okay, so it's the baseband frequency. So this is how we do the uh, FDM. This is if you look at in terms of the time domain. Uh, the last picture is at uh, this one is frequency domain. Okay. If you look at the time domain, we do the same thing. You have the time domain signal, okay? 
and you then you modulate with different carrier frequency. Uh, F1 is the lowest frequency, F2 is a higher frequency, and F3 is the highest frequency. When you modulate, if you modulate with the AM signal, uh, it, uh, amplitude modulation, you see that the envelope of the modulated signal, okay, um, follow the amplitude of the baseband signal. Okay, the frequency of the modulated signal on the right is um, the frequency is the same as the frequency of the carrier signal, but the amplitude follow the amplitude of the baseband. Okay. And then you combine them together, and then you get this signal. Okay, so you transmit this signal on only one link. Okay, then at the receiving end, again you filter. When you filter, you will get uh, the original signal back with the noise. Okay, in this case, they assume that there is no noise, so that um, so to make you um, to make it easy. Okay, to understand. So su suppose there is no noise, um, you get something like this back. Okay, the same as what what was transmitted. And then you you demodulate, okay, with the different carrier frequency, and then you get the original signal back. Okay. Now let's look at the applications, okay? For voice signal, the FAT bandwidth of a voice is just about three hundred to three hundred and four three three thousand four hundred hertz, or about uh, about three three kilohertz, okay? And usually we allow for four kilohertz for one uh, telephone channel, okay? And and this one, okay, we need to use uh, SSB or single sideband transmission because this is one sideband. We need about uh, a little bit more than three kilohertz, and we assign four kilohertz, okay, in practice. If you use double sideband, you have to allow eight kilohertz, okay? So in this case, since we allow only four kilohertz. We have to transmit with the single sideband. Um, in the US, okay, there are AT and T hierarchy, okay, that combine, okay, there are three, um, three le levels, okay, a group, a master group, sorry, a group, a super group, and a master group. For the group, one group com uh, is a combination of twelve voice channels. So you have twelve users of the telephone lines, okay, coming together. Um, okay, into a group, okay, and the bandwidth for one voice channel is 4 kilohertz. So 12 voice channel is 12, uh, 48 kilohertz, okay, and we, we need uh, such a subcarriers from 64 to 108 kilohertz, okay. So you have voice. 12 of them, okay, let's see, all look the same, you have 12 of them coming, okay, the first one multiply by cosine 2 pi, Fc is um, 64 kilohertz, okay, T, the second one multiply by cosine 2 pi, 68 kilohertz, T, Okay, something like this. And the last one is multiplied by cosine 2 pi 108 kilohertz. Okay, kilo T. Okay, so you have something like this. Move over here, 64K. Move over here, 68K. It's a single sideband, okay? So you send only this side. And then uh, 72K, okay? And then the last one is at 108K kilohertz, okay? Then you add them all together to get one signal. Look like this. Okay, and the first one is 64K hertz. The last, the last carry is one, 108 kilohertz. So the N here have to be 112 kilohertz, right? So the total here is 
64 to 112 kilohertz. This is the bandwidth. Okay. Now let's look at the supergroup. The supergroup is a combination of five groups. Okay. So it consists of 60 voice channels because each group has 12 voice channels. When you combine it into a supergroup, okay, each group will be treated as a single signal, okay, with 48 kilohertz bandwidth, okay, and then you modulate by again a subcarrier, okay, and the bandwidth total is 240 kilohertz, okay, which you can look at the uh, because it's 60 voice channel and each voice channel is 4 kilohertz, right? So you multiply them together, you get 240 kilohertz, and you use a subcarrier again from 420 to 612 kilohertz and you increase, uh, increase for 48 kilohertz, okay, Incre increment. So if you look at this, for a group, So you have five of this, okay? You multiply by cosine two pi. Fc is um, four hundred and twenty kilo kilohertz, okay? And the next one is increased by forty-eight, so four sixty-eight kilohertz, okay? Something like this. Multiply. The last one is multiplied by cosine two pi, um, six hundred and twelve kilohertz. Okay, and then you again you get something like this. This is a uh, single sideband. Okay, so actually when you mod modulate this, you get something like uh, double sideband, but then you go to filter. Okay, you go go to a filter to get only one side, okay, like this. So I am kind of um, go like, this is single side band, okay? So in between, in between this, have to be filter to make it single side band. The last picture is the same, okay? This one actually has to go like this, and then go to a filter, and then go this way. So I, I kind of write, you know, only, um, so in between is a, a filter. Okay, to make it single side band. Anyway, when you get this, then you add them all together, And you get this is sixty four, sorry, two hundred and twenty kilohertz. The last one is twelve kilohertz. Uh, the last carrier, okay. So the total would be from four twenty to um, this is plus forty eight, right? Plus forty eight is six um, six sixty. So the bandwidth would be bandwidth would be 240 kilohertz. Okay? So this is one group. Uh sorry, one super one super group. Okay? One super group, okay? Contain five sub uh five group and each group has 12 voice channel in here, okay? Inside is 12 voice channels. Now let's look at the master group. The master group is a combination of 10 supergroups or 600 voice channels, uh, and the bandwidth is 2.52 megahertz. This is done in the same way. 
Okay, as uh, when I did the super group from the group, okay, so you can do that by yourself. Now, let's look at the FDM and TDM, the difference between the FDM and the TDM, okay? For the FDM, we divide the frequency, okay, into um, channels. So you have uh, channel 1 to channel 6 in this picture on the left. And um, so you have uh, that the time is the same, so you are sending at the same time, but with different frequency. So the channel can be separated by filter, okay? That because uh, the data, the signal is put into different frequency for different frequency band or different channels for different users. However, if you look at the time division multiplexing, in this case, you will divide the time. So the time is different. You, you, you separate the time into small channels, channel one, channel two, channel three, something like that. And when you go to channel six, then you start channel one again. This is the case if you have six user, okay? So you will repeat one, channel one to channel six, and then channel one to channel six, and then channel one to channel six again and again. But the frequency is the same, which means that at that time of, for example, channel one, it used all frequency, all frequency band that is allowed, okay? It doesn't have to divide the frequency. So, Time division multiplexing means that you divide the time and use all frequency. Frequency division multiplexing means you divide the frequency and you send at the same time. Okay. Now let's look at the synchronous division, time division multiplexing. This case is used for a uh, digital signal. Okay. And it can be used if the capacity of the transmission medium is higher than the data rate. Okay. That is required by one user channel. So usually if the, if the link okay, in between is like optical fiber okay, or the coaxial cable and you can combine uh, signal from many users together to transmit into this uh, link, then you can use uh, synchronous time division multiplexing. In this case, synchronous D TDM means that the multiplexer will allocate exactly the same time slot to each user at all times at, as what we have seen here. If this time is channel one, it is used for channel one only, okay? And if this time is for channel two, it is used for channel two only. For example, if I'm, if I'm start at time zero, okay, until time uh, one second, okay? So channel one can transmit for, for the first second, okay? And no one else can transmit. And the channel two can transmit from the first second to the second second, okay? So, uh, so only one second duration that it can transmit, something like that, okay? So when you look at the time, you will know, oh, if it's uh, at 1.2 second, it means that this is the signal of channel two. But if it's at 0 0.5 seconds, then it, ha then it has to be the data, the signal of channel one, okay? So even though the, the device has nothing to send, okay? Uh, no one else can send because when the uh, when the, the receiver look at it, okay, it will look at it. Oh, if it's 0 0.75 second, it has to be of channel one, even though channel one is not sending anything. If channel two or channel three users send at this least time, the destination or the receiver will be confusing, okay, will misunderstand. So when each channel is assigned um, the time that it can transmit, if it doesn't want to send anything, it has to be idle, okay? Nothing can be sent at that time, okay? Therefore, it wastes the capacity, right? But the uh, benefit is to use uh, for the simple implementation, okay, of the circuit. And this is also true for FDM. FDM is also simple to implement, okay? Even though um, it's still, if that frequency is not used by anyone, by channel one, channel two cannot use, uh, the the free frequency uh, range anyway, okay? Because it's already assigned to the other channels. Now let's look at this. If you have um, four users, okay, want to send with the TDM, synchronous TDM, uh, user A, B, C, D, and the multiplexer is just uh, the moving, okay? Like this, okay? So it's t it will touch um, A, user A, so it's pick up the data, the signal from A, and then for, for a fixed amount of time, and then it will pick up the, the, the signal from B for a fixed amount of time, and then pick the, pick the signal from C and from D, and then go back to A again. So you can see that the first, 
the first packet on the right, okay, this is the first that come out. So it, since all, uh, all users have data to send at the first, the first time, okay, at the first slot, so it's complete A, B, C, D, okay, A, B, C, D. Have to be this way, A, B, C, D, okay. Then um, when um, it turns for the second time, okay, the second time again, the, it's complete, the, the packet is complete A, B, C, D, okay. The third is also complete, but for it's go for the fourth time, okay, what happened is that B has nothing else to send, okay, B has already finished sending. So in the fourth packet, you can see that it have only, it have four slots. But it has data only from A, C, and D. Okay, it doesn't have the data from B. So you waste the capacity at this point, okay, because no one else can send. Even though A, D can have more data to send, it cannot send at packet number four here. It can only send in its own slot. Then at packet number five, you see that they have um, data from A and from D, right? But B and C have nothing to send. And the last uh, packet has the data only from A. So you can see that the, the one that doesn't, the slot that have nothing in, in there, it means that you waste the capacity. And it's sent to the other side, okay? Now if you look at the receiver, okay? What happened is that you have um, the packet, okay? The first, second, third are the full packet, okay? That's just being transmitted from the transmitter. At the receiver is D multiplex. So you move, okay, in another, um, in another, in another, in another circle, okay. So it's, it will touch again A, B, C, D. These are the destination of the user A, B, C, D, okay. So when it touch, when the data coming in the first packet, it, uh, the first data is for A. So it will touch A, okay, until the signal is done for that slot, okay, for that time that is fixed for that slot, then it's go to B. So the data is sent to the destination of B and it go to C, sent to the destination of C, go to D and send to the destination of D, okay. So um, for the second time, the second circle, okay, all of them are also have the data to, to be transmitted. But for you go, when you go to the fourth um, packet, okay, when you go to B, it will be idle, okay, not sending anything. Okay, and even with the uh, six packet, when you A go to A, you have something to send to A, but for the other users, other destination, nothing to be transmitted, okay, but you have to um, turn anyway. So this is the, show the concept of how you interleave. This is like how you interleave, because you have A, B, C, D, and then A, B, C, D, and then A, B, C, D, okay. So this is how you interleave the data from many users together and send them out as a sequence of frames, okay on a single transmission line. Now, if you look at the TDM standard, um, we have the DS1 standard and ITUT standard. Uh, ITU is a International Telecommunication Union, okay? ITU, International Telecommunication Union, okay? Uh, DS1 is, um, it's a standard for the North America and Japan, okay? So it's a basic of the basis of the TDM hierarchy in those, um, in those area. But in Thailand, we use um, ITUT standard, okay? Um, the DS1 format, multiplex um, 24 channels, okay? With 8 bits per channels together. And you have a fixed length frame, frame okay? Which is uh, 24 channels multiplied by 8 and one extra uh, framing bit, okay? So one frame has a length of 193 bits. For the ITU, this one is the international um, TDM hierarchy, okay? Um, for the level one format, okay, it multiplex 30 channels. So these two standard uh, use kind of the same, similar techniques, okay? But it multiplex different size of the, different numbers of the channels, okay? So you have 30 channels instead of 24 in the DS1 standard. And um, so you have a different data rate than the DS1 standard, okay? And this is the, the table that compare between the North America and the IT, ITUT uh, standard. Again, the, the, in Thailand we use the ITUT one, okay? So level one of ITUT, it's uh, 30 voice channels, okay, and we have a data rate of about 2 megabits per sec. 
Level 2 is 120 voice channel, and we have about 8.5, 8.4, 8.5 megabit per second, something like this. So you combine, combine together, okay? And if you have extra bit, it's, um, the, it's because you, uh, you add some, you know, in, in the standard that you have to add some more bits. Now, if you want to transmit the voice, okay, using the DS1 or ITUT level 1 format, okay, um, how we do that? Okay, if you remember the, please recall, okay, that the pulse code modulation, you have to send eight symbols per second, okay? Eight, eight, sorry, eight samples per second, okay? And eight bits per samples for voice. So we will note down here voice, PCM voice, okay, we sent 8,000 sample per second, 8 bit per sample. Now, why, why do we have 8,000 samples per second? Because voice is, we have a voice channel is 4 kilohertz, right? So we have to sampling the sampling frequency has to be more than or equal to the maximum frequency, the bandwidth, okay? Max of the base band. Okay. So you use the sampling frequency equal to two times, sorry, two times the bandwidth. Two times four kilohertz, okay? So eight kilohertz which means that you sample, when you have voice coming in, you sample 8,000 times per second. So you're sampling 8,000 times per second. So you have 8,000 sample per second, okay, coming out. And in the standard, you, when you quantize, okay, you will quantize with 8 bits per sample. Okay, and that's why we have this. Now, uh, when you transmit, okay, this is what I show you here, fs equal to more than or equal to 2 f max. okay. Now, we want to transmit n samples per second, right? But each of the frame contains only one sample. So you need to transmit 8,000 frames per second. Okay, if you remember this, you can see that it's off the frame. Um, we contain only, only one, you know, um, a little bit of the, of the channel. In this case, it will send eight bits, okay, per, per channel. So you can send only one sample. Um, and then the other slot in the frame is be belong to the other users. Okay, now, so you have to send 8,000 frames per second. Now, in the data transmission, okay, we, we design the same data rate. We want to send data that is not voice because we want it to be compatible with the voice transmission. And its channels use 64 kilobit per second, okay? Before, because, what? 64 kilobit per second, because 8,000 sample per second multiplied by 8 bit per sample is equal to 64 bit per second, sorry, 64 kilobit per second, okay? So we have, this is per channel. Now, if we have two users who want to send only 32 kilobit per second each, okay, maybe not right, not, now, not nowadays, okay? But this is a technique. Uh, I just want to tell you um, the idea of how, how you can combine them together in the same slot, okay? Even though the slot, the data rate right now that we are using is much higher than this. Anyway, if the, you have two users want to use 32 kilobit per second each, they can share one slot, okay? So each user can send 8 bit data for every two frames. It will look like this. So if this is this the first frame, okay, so this is the first frame, the second frame, and the third frame, and so on. If A 
and B. Okay, one two cent thirty two kilobit per sec each. Okay, what we do is that for the first one we send A, the first frame, and then we send A at the third frame. For the first, for the at the same China position at the same slot, at the second frame we send B instead. Okay, you send B here. And then the, the next one you send B at this point. So you alternate, okay? A and A, B and B. So since if you send um, only one user, you have 64 kilobit per sec for one slot. In this case, you will have only 32 kilobit per sec, okay? Because you, you share between two users. So each user can send 4,000 times per second, okay? Times 8 bit data each, so 62, uh, 32 kilobit per sec. If the full user want to send, okay, and um, in the same slot with uh, 16 kilobit per sec, okay, they have to share one slot. So you have to, so you send every four times, every four frames, okay, you send one every four frames. But if you want to send higher data rate, which is um, 128 kilobit per sec, okay, in this case, you can do this. So if uh, C want to send 128 kilobit per sec, okay, what we do is that C can send this. C can use two slot. So every frame C use two slot. Since one slot is um, the, uh, 62, 64 kilobit per sec, okay, so two slot is 128 kilobit per sec, okay, so 64 kilobit per sec times 2, 128 bit per sec, okay, for a user C. Now let's talk about flow and error control for synchronous TDM. Oh, okay, before that, um, each user can maybe decide different numbers of uh, slots per frame, okay? This is as I just showed you, some use um, two slots, some use uh, only half, you know, one one uh, one frame, and then um, then the next frame is not sending. Then send the next frame, something like that. One after the, okay. So just use half of the frame. Um, and the voice channel and the data channels can be multiplied together in the same frame, okay? Because we use the same uh, data rate, okay? We use the same format for of the data, the same format as the voice. So the data you send um, for one slot, the data you send only one byte. Okay, so suppose this is C, use C is data, and um, D is voice. So you can put them together in the same, in the same frame, okay? Because inside of this, it just look like, inside will just look like this. Eight bits, okay. So eight bit each, okay. Even though they are data or voice, they are eight bit each. Okay, in one slot. So when you transmit, it transmit in the frame. You will just transmit one zero. One one zero one 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 something like this, okay. And uh, when 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 it transmit as a frame, so you come 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 multiplex them together. Now for flow and error control for synchronous TDM, okay. There is no header or tailor for synchronous TDM, right? So how do how do we control the flow and the errors? Because if you remember, we sent just the data in itself, and we just know that it's the data for user A because it's at this time. It's the data for user B because it's at this time that you already assign. So how do you control the flow and, uh, and, the, and do the error controls, okay? The answer is that there is no need to control the flow because the flow is fixed. The data rate is, uh, of the multiplex is not changing, okay? It's, it's constant, it's always sent um, like this. For example, eight, uh, 8,000 frames per second, okay? 64 
um, kilobit per sec, something like that. Okay, so the multiplexer and the multiplexer are assigned, are designed, okay, to operate at that rate exactly. Okay, so it, when it's move, when it turn, okay, it will, um, it will be correspond to the rate that you, that that you design, okay, for the standard. Now the error control we are done, okay, per channel basis, okay, because errors. If the errors occur in one channel, um, we don't want the other user doesn't want to have to worry about this this channel, and they don't want to be retransmitted data, okay, for all of the thirty users, for example. And we can use the high level data link control or other data link control protocols on a per channel basis. So how do we do that? Let's look at this. Suppose uh, you have. Many frame, okay. And suppose A is voice, okay. Uh, and A do not need error control, okay. Suppose B is data. B need error control, okay. So what we can do is that B, user B, okay, this is the, suppose we use HDLC. So it's have the flag and control, something like that, uh, sorry, address, um, address and control, okay, and then information, and then uh, FCS, and then flag, okay. What they can do is that the first frame, okay, it will send, it will put, um, because it use, uh, want to use error control, right? So it will put it into the HDLC format. In the HDLC format, and then this one, in the first frame, it will send, this is the flag, okay? And the second, second one, suppose this is the address, okay? And then the control, and then the data. So it will send in the, um, if you look at this, as you know, um, you know, it's, um, this is just a binary sequence, okay? So you put one byte here, and the next byte here, and the next byte here, and the next byte here. And when it demultiplexes at the end, demultiplexes at the end, and go to B, okay, B will reconstruct this. Uh, that has the flag and the address and the control and the data, something like, like this. And it will do error control, checking the error, okay, using this format, okay, so this is a flag, something like that. So it's have to, it have, doesn't have to bother, okay, with the other channels, and it doesn't ha also have to bother with B, okay, even though there's something wrong here, for example, okay, B will take care of it by itself, okay, using the FCS in its own uh, file format. In, sorry, in its own frame format, but the uh, but it doesn't have to retransmit the whole the whole frame, okay? With thirty channels, doesn't have to do that, okay? This is what we done with the with the uh, synchronous uh, TDM. Now let's look at the multiple ac channel access, okay? For this, this is these are the techniques, okay? These are the techniques for sharing. Uh, multiple transmitter and receive, receiver stations, okay? It's a little bit different from FDM and TDM because there is no use of physical multiplexer, okay? If station is assigned a frequency band or a sequence of time slot, if it assigned a frequency band, is a uh, frequency division multiple axis or FDMA. If it's uh, assigned a sequence of time slot, it is time division multiple axis or TDMA, okay? And then it will be transmitted directly on the channel. So these two main techniques, okay, are a little bit different. Let's look at the FDMA. For the FDMA, you you, you will use um, use for both of them, okay. You use in the configuration that you have base station and many subscriber stations, such as uh, satellite networks, okay, or cellular networks, or Wi-Fi, WiMAX. Um, the base station will assign different bandwidths, okay, to different subscriber stations. Uh, for example, the subscriber station can be your mobile phones, okay. So you have base station, um, you know, at the like 
on the in the building uh, on top of the building or you know it's a um, big base station okay so for example this may be your base station so this is the base station and the phone in in here in the area these are the subscriber okay and they have to talk to each other okay so um so the base station assign different bandwidth okay and this is called uplink uh uplink frequency and there, there is another um downlink frequency okay that is assigned for communications from the base station to all other stations so basically you have many uplink frequency band but you have only one downlink frequency band okay so the uplink frequency band uh, for S1, S2, S3, and you, you see that there is one downlink frequency band, and in between the frequency band, they, they are guard band, okay? The guard band so that the spectrum do not interfere with each, each other. So each substation has uh, its sub of the its sub channel or its frequency band here, uplink frequency band is used by only one single station. So if the station does not use it, okay, the capacity of the channel is wasted. The good thing is that it's less complex, less complex, okay, uh, than TDMA, and it requires fewer overhead bits, okay, because if you know the channels, uh, you know the frequency, you know what station it is, okay, so you know the frequency band that is from this range to this range of hertz, okay, then it must be uh, the uplink of station number two, something like that, okay? The TDMA or time division multiple axis, okay, again has uh, base station and many subscriber stations. For our cellular phone uh, in Thailand, okay, in the past we used FDMA, but right now, okay, in the past many years ago, um, we use FDMA, but later we use TDMA, okay? This TDMA is like for digital um, telephone, um, mobile phone, okay? But in the past, it was analog phone that used uh, FDMA. For TDMA, we use um, one up, uplink frequency, okay? And one downlink frequency. So there are only two frequency band, okay? Now the band, um, one in each of the band, okay? We transmit a sequence of time slots. And each time slot is, uh, is assigned for each subscriber or each uh, mobile phone. So you have like, you can send at this time, the other can send at another time. It's like different time slot, okay? So you have channel like one, two, three, four, five. Uh, in this case, it's one, two, three, and then one, two, three, and then one, two, three again. Okay, so you send, uh, it's uplink frequency and downlink frequency, and each of them has time slot. Uh, one, two, three, and then one, two, three, and then one, two, three, in the repetitive manner. And between the time slot, you have guard time, okay? So that um, they will not interfere, or when the time is not really synchronized, okay, you, you will not have a problem. And also there is, there is a guard band between the two uh, frequency band, okay? Uplink and downlink frequency. For TDMA, okay, each of the sub, each sub channels is used by only one single station, the same as FDMA, okay? And in this case, the data you have to transmit in bursts, okay? You have to send like very fast for channel one and then wait until you get a slot and send very fast for your slot and then wait until you get a slot again, okay? So this is not, not like FDMA that you send at all the time, okay? In this case, you have to send for a short time. So you're sending in bursts, okay? Very fast for a short time. That is the end of, um, Chapter 7, okay? And next, we will go to Chapter 8 in the next um, tape on, on um, y, y area network. Okay, thank you.